Hello everyone, many thanks for joining this webinar. I'm Warren Butler, Marketing Director at Preact, and today I'm joined by Sri Bala from our Managed Service team. Today we're going to be looking at the marketing module for Microsoft Dynamics 365 and how this creates personalised experiences. After the introductions, Sri will guide you through Dynamics Marketing using a scenario to demonstrate a selection of its features with a focus on personalisation. This includes using the subscription centre and using forms to capture content preferences. We'll also look at how to define a target audience using the customer segment feature by querying data across fields and entities in Dynamics. Shri will then walk you through some of the capabilities in the email designer, including how to personalise messages by inserting data from Dynamics fields or using this data to determine if some email content blocks should be dynamically shown or hidden. Then we'll cover customer journeys, which brings together all of these elements to define a series of actions for each campaign. Finally, we'll look ahead at what's coming up in the next Dynamics release wave and answer your questions in a Q&A at the end. If you've not previously looked at Dynamics Marketing or if you've recently started um, working with this, we do hope you find this is a useful introduction. Um, the application has many more capabilities than we have time to cover today. But if you do want to um, understand more and perhaps take a deeper dive into what this offers, please do get in touch. Before we kick off, a brief introduction to Preact. We are a Microsoft Gold Partner helping organisations implement and support Dynamics 365 across CRM applications and solutions which are built on the Microsoft Power platform. Trading since 1993, today we support more than 10,000 Dynamics users across a variety of industry sectors. We're one of just a few select partners to be named in Microsoft's inner circle for business applications, which has put Preact into the top 1% of providers for each of the last three years. If you are looking to do more with Dynamics, please do get in touch and we'll be delighted to discuss your plans and offer advice. Microsoft's marketing module for Dynamics 365 was first launched just over two years ago, and in that time the product has rapidly evolved, both in terms of its features but also its ease of use. We are seeing an increased trend in clients who have recently deployed this, while others are actively evaluating the product, so we're excited to showcase some examples of its capabilities today. One of the main attractions of Dynamics marketing is that it was designed for and is built on the Power Platform, which means it lives together and works alongside dynamic sales as well as the other modules, including customer service. It also means that all marketing interactions and data are stored in the same place as relationship and other contact data. That provides a more complete view of each customer without there being any need to manage synchronization processes between marketing and CRM. And by unifying the data, it means that greater insights can be used as the basis for triggering personalised contextual campaigns. So to get started, let me now hand over to Shri for the main presentation. Thanks, Shri. Thank you, Warren. Um, hello, everyone. Today we will be covering setting up of a subscription centre for all new customers interested in joining your mailing list and sending out marketing emails, setting up segments and setting a customer journey. We will be using a fictitious coffee shop called Coffee Magic to explain the different elements in Dynamics 365 marketing solution. We will be implementing a journey for a customer where when they visit the Coffee Magic store, scan their loyalty card, hence recording their visit, they would receive a survey email from Coffee Magic within a week. So let's first start by setting up the subscription center. A subscription center is a page that your customers or contacts in Dynamics can use to manage their communication preferences and contact details with your organization. 
Setting up a subscription center is very important, especially to comply with GDPR guidelines and to be able to provide the customer the ability to choose the type of communications that they would like to receive. In Dynamics 365 Marketing, you would not be able to send a commercial email without a link to the subscription center. As you can see here, I'm in my trial environment um, where I'm going to navigate to a marketing form section. As you can see, there is a default subscription center which is added when you actually install the solution. If you do not have a custom subscription center, this is what will be used. As you can see, this is your default subscription center where you can update the email and just have a do not email. This means that when somebody submits this default subscription center form, then it is a blanket do not email. You would not be able to send any sorts of communication, uh, commercial emails uh, to this person. However, most organizations would have their own types of communication that they would have to send to their customers and hence the use of subscription list. So I'm going to navigate to the subscription list. I have created two subscription lists as um, a monthly newsletter and voucher. I'm going to create a new one of type event. And what's the purpose? I would add this as sending event information. Um, the subscription would be true, which means that when somebody actually checks the box, um, it means that they are going to be added into the subscription. I'm going to save and close this, which means that now I have a new subscription list of type event. Now, the next thing I would do is go to the marketing form. I have already created um, a marketing form of type subscription center. This is very important because we have landing pages forward to friend and subscription center as the form type. In order for the subscription center to be to be hosted and, and functional, the form type has to be of type subscription center. I'm going to go in. I'm only creating a, a subscription center catering to contacts. You could choose to do this for leads as well. I've chosen a, an out of the box marketing form template called subscription form for the purposes of this demonstration. Um, you can either choose one from the template or create your own. Um, if we scroll down to the bottom, um, each of these fields are marketing form fields which are connected to the contact or lead in a certain way. So if, for example, the first name, the, the field type is a, a single line of text and the contact mapping is with the first name of the contact and if a lead is submitting this form, then the information would be mapped to the lead. Um, you have different types of information here, which each of these fields can be customized. The bottom part where it says monthly newsletter, because I've added it, that's where we add the subscription list. If I scroll on my right hand side towards the bottom, here it gives me a list of all the available subscription lists that have not yet been added onto the marketing form. I'm going to pull the voucher. And offers. And 
also the events. So now we have the events subscription list added here. Um, the do not email me is an out of the box subscription list, which is like a blanket do not email me at all. I don't want to be included in any of the communications. And this actually um, is mapped to the do not bulk email on the contact. If we click on each of these fields, you have further customizations that you can do um, on each of these. Make it uh, pre-fill it, have it as a required field, etc. Um, I'm going to save this subscription center. What I'd also like to show is the summary tab here. As you can see here, this is another set of customizations that you can actually do to your marketing form. Um, you have default ma uh, contact matching strategy, which is mainly uh, using the email address if you would like to add further matching criteria and duplicate rejection rules you would go into the matching criteria uh, matching strategy and amend that or add a new one you would be able to change these according to the type of form that you are going to deploy um, after saving this you the next thing to do is to actually go live with the form once you go live, you can edit it, but this is, uh, you would have to go live in order for users to be able to start using this form. Okay, so I've gone live here. The next thing that I would do is to actually create a marketing page to host this marketing form. Now, the other thing that I'd just like to um add here is the form capture ability in dynamics marketing if you have a website form which is already there you do not have to recreate it using a marketing form all you have to do is create a new form capture uh, which would actually give you a javascript um, you would deploy that javascript on your website which would then allow you to map the form fields on your web page to subsequent form fields on the marketing form in dynamics so you would be able to set it up that way as well if you do not want to capture um, if you do not want to recreate the form using dynamics moving on a marketing page i am going to create a new marketing page to host the subscription form. I'm not going to choose a template and hence I'm going to skip this. I'm going to the top corner and renaming this as subscription reference. The type, please choose this as subscription center as what I had mentioned, similar to what I had mentioned while creating marketing forms. It's very important that the form and the page have the same type, else we would not be able to add uh, the form onto this marketing page. The partial URL would be the URL which would follow um, the main website that this would be hosted in because you are using a dynamics portal so in this case i would say um subscription and leave it at that as you can see here this is a one column um editor you can change it to do three depending on the customization that you would like i'm going to drag and drop a form and hence going to add a marketing form. This would show me, because I've chosen the type as subscription center, this is going to show me all the options that I have, marketing forms of type subscription center. And in this case, I'm going to add this as coffee, magic sign up. As you can see, it's added exactly dropped the form onto this page. I'm going to save this.
on the summary tab you would be able to see the marketing website which is the out of the box portal that is connected to this subscript uh, to this uh, instance if i go live it actually generates a full url with the partial url now in your cases you would have to set up um, the organization website which would be picked up this is picking it up this way because it's my trial instance if i click on the globe next to the full page url it opens up a subscription form and as and when somebody fills out the subscription form and provides the um Commun types of communication that they would like to receive and submit it, they would be automatically added on to the subscription list um, in your dynamics. Now, if you would like people to um, opt out, this is your subscription center. Every email would have this in the footer if it's a commercial email. And if they click on the link, they would be taken to their personalized subscription page uh, where they can go in and update any of this information or uh, change their preference at any point of time. Segments are how you define target audience for a customer journey. The segment designer resembles the advanced find feature more or less. Since the information uh, from the sales and the marketing app are all in the same database you would be able to use any information from your sales app or your customer services app while creating these segments um, we would be looking at dynamic and static segments and the difference uh, and how we can create segments based on a different app but within the same uh, database and how do you actually add conditional blocks on segments and what does that actually mean? In um, segments, as I said earlier, we have static segments and dynamic segments. Static segments uh, are establish a static list of contacts who are selected manually um, by a CRM user. So you would manually add in the members onto this list. However, in a dynamic segment, uh, the, there are use of uh, logical expressions uh, which actually create the segment. So it would be all contacts from London or all contacts who have submitted a survey and the list of dynamic segments, uh, the contacts in the dynamic segment would change constantly to reflect the addition um, or removal of these contracts based on those conditions. I have set up an entity called Shop Visit in my sales app to record uh, all the visitors and their frequency of visiting my coffee shop. In order to be able to see that information in the marketing app, I would navigate to the settings and go to the marketing data configuration which actually gives me a list of all the entities that are available in that database i will then navigate to the shop visit entity as you can see here check the box and then scroll up and publish the changes if i do not do this step uh, I will not be able to tie up the entity information into access the shop visit entity records uh, in my marketing app. This has to be done um, for to access any um, entity which is outside your marketing environment, but is there in your sales app or your um, opportunity uh, or your custom service app. So since this is done, I'm going back to my marketing area and opening up the segment. Here I will, I've already started uh, my coffee shop visit weekly survey se uh, segment where 
I've added my loyalty number. And the next thing I want to add is if the shop visits in the last contacts who have actually visited my shop in the last 10 days. Here I would add a related entity and select my related entity as shop visit. If I would not have done the previous step, I would not have I would not be able to select this um, option here. Now in the shop visit, I'm going to add the condition and I'm going to say uh, visit date in the last within in the last um, seven days. So I'm going to do that, save. And that saves. I can click on estimate size and it gives me an estimation. However, this need not be accurate. It is always advised to go live before um, actually having a correct um, display of the number of members on that list. Now, I have 10 records or 10 contact members uh, who are part of this segment who have visited my shop in the last seven days. If I wanted to add another condition, I can do so, which is related to a shop visit or to the contact as such. I can also add another segment block and create a an intersection, a unison or uh, a union uh, or uh, an exclusion. So there are multiple ways you can create your segments um, so that you can define the exact target audience for your customer journey. Now um, I'm happy with my segment so I'm going to go live and once the segment is published if I go to the members it should give me a list of all the members that comply with this segment. So I'm going to refresh this again Now I refreshed it again and now it is live. If I'm going to the members, I can see all my 10 member contacts who have actually visited my shop in the last seven days. This segment can now be used in a, a customer journey. Uh, once we go in, every customer journey always starts with a segment and hence it's very important that uh, you define your segments correctly. Next, we will be looking at marketing emails. Some of the best practices that are in Dynamics Marketing uh, for marketing emails and how can you send a quick send uh, of emails to a, a small so a group of people uh, from the marketing email section. For the purposes of this demo, I already have created two email templates in my marketing email section. Uh, you can create marketing emails from an email template which is predefined or defined by you or using uh, HTML. Any tweaks can be done on the HTML um, tab here. Go back to the designer to have a look at the assisted it features by clicking on the element and click on the assist edit feature. Now this is the feature that pulls in information from the contact record or related to the contact record so that where the contact has a more personalized um, email sent to them. There is also an option to add in um, HTML code if else conditions whereby you would be able to have different sentences or different blocks of uh, email message depending on a certain uh, condition on the contact record. 
The other cool feature that is there is the A-B testing. You can do this based on any of these four uh, types of con uh, content, parts of the email. And um, this can be um, scheduled to understand which is the most effective uh, of the two types of emails that will be sent. The other main feature in Dynamics Marketing is the ability to send a commercial email versus a transactional email. A commercial email is mainly um in 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 broad speaking it's a marketing email which is mainly based on the preferences of your contact record so uh, this is where your subscription list play in and this is the kind of information that the people would be opting in and out However, a transactional email is when somebody does not want to be contacted in a bulk email, but yet want to receive information regarding maybe their payment or maybe an order that they have uh, placed with that company. Now, in these cases, it's, even though it's a blanket do not email that they have given and they probably have... Um, unsubscribe from all their subscription lists um, the in essence they are actually unsubscribing from the bulk emails they would still be able to receive transactional emails coming to best practice one of the good things to follow is to actually add a preview text for the email you can add this by clicking on the arrow here and adding in a message that would appear in the preview of an unopened or an opened uh, email uh, in your inbox. So I can add this. Thank you for your feedback. This is in addition to your subject line in the email which um, this just helps the user to understand what the email is about along with the subject of the email another thing to remember is actually adding a plain text version of an email um, you can either have this automatically generated which would just parse all that html and extract the information to get um, the plain text version or you can actually have this written out in um, a simple text format uh, so i can remove all the code and this would actually help uh, some spam filters to let your email through also this means that anyone who is uh, viewing the email in a browser or a device which is not HTML supported this would be the data that would be shown to them this is especially important as nowadays a lot of people are using smartwatches and other wearables to read their emails Coming to quick sense, uh, there is a new feature in Dynamics Marketing called Quick Sense, whereby you can actually send a marketing email to 30 contacts by manually choosing them. So I can say I want this email to be sent to these contacts I can select up to 30 and click send now and irrespective of what the content is, the personalization will be applied and the emails will be sent to these people on this list. This is a really cool feature, especially if someone has come back to you saying, oh, I have not received the email or I've misplaced it and all you want to do is send that email to one person or 
a few people who have actually raised concerns that they have not received an email. The reason this is so important is that is because all your emails have to otherwise be sent through a customer journey. Now, if I click on send now, this actually creates a customer journey um, and sends those emails. Before the introduction of this feature, you would have had to actually create a segment at these at these uh, contact records, create the customer journey and send them. And right now, this send now feature uh, has automated all of that to make it easier for the CRM user. The next thing that we will be looking at are customer journeys and how we can bring in all the marketing elements that we have created so far into one customer journey. Uh, a customer journey defines the marketing journey that you would like the customer to take based on their interactions. You could build a simple customer journey with just a segment and an email or a complex one where each step is defined by their previous interactions. I have already created a weekly visit survey customer journey which we will be looking at right now. The segment group that I have defined has the visitors from last week, which has been defined um, in, in the start. Um, as you can see, because this is an run at an earlier date, this has about 43 records, which satisfy the condition on the date that I had run this. After defining the segment. The next style is the Forms Pro Survey. Now, this is something that I've created in Forms Pro. It is a simple uh, survey uh, asking the um, recipients of this email, how do they like their coffee and how would they rate our service? Now, it's a cool feature within Dynamics Marketing that you can actually pull in the form survey into your customer journey and define the the, the survey without um, having any other setup. Um, the thing to remember is the Forms Pro is actually changing to customer voice um, sometime in August. Customer voice would stay as a separate product to Forms Pro and we will be covering more about customer voice um, in uh, the next couple of months when the product is actually launched. Depending on what the Forms Pro survey submission is, we would be able to have our marketing emails, which are these two emails which I had defined. Since I have already run this customer journey, you can see the influx of the contacts uh, through the journey at any given point of time. The reason this is stuck here is because my 43 contracts were test contracts and they have not actually come through. Um, but in real time instances, these would actually be uh, flowing through the customer journey and would be each of those contracts will be receiving the relevant emails. The other cool thing that is there is the ability to create new segments from existing customer journeys. So for example, from um, the segment group, how many have actually been processed, you can create a customer journey from here. Also, just as how it is with the other elements of Dynamics Marketing, um, for any of this to go uh, to be published, uh, please click on the Go Live button on the ribbon on top. So, that's all we will be covering today. Our focus has mainly been on getting Dynamics Marketing started in your organization and providing a personalized journey for your customer base. There are parts of the marketing solution we have not covered, like the events section, the lead scoring uh, capability, 
marketing insights, how to handle templates, how to manage security roles and dynamics for your marketing team, etc. All these elements enable you to empower your marketing team to provide the best customer experience for your brand. Now back to Warren, who is going to give you a roundup of what's coming soon. Thanks very much, Sri. Just to close out this presentation, let's take a look at some of the improvements and new features for Dynamics Marketing that are coming up in the next release wave, which is due to be available from October. Top of our list is a redesigned experience for the customer journey designer. And as you can see from the preview that we've included here, compared to the version which Sri had demonstrated earlier, the canvas designer is being modernized. Also, currently journey triggers will only support positive conditions, but another improvement that Microsoft is making here will be a further option for a negative trigger path that would enable um, follow-ups with contacts who don't meet a specific condition or set of conditions. A further improvement is greater flexibility to map web forms to more entities. Currently, these can only be mapped to leads and contacts. Event management is another part of the marketing module and in the next release there is new integration coming with Microsoft Teams to track webinars as live team events. Other updates include improvements to the email designer um, with new layout options. We haven't covered the social scheduling features of Dynamics Marketing in this presentation but there are some improvements coming to that as well. The final item that we've highlighted is a new capability that will initially be launched as a public preview that would enable segments to be defined using natural language queries. This could potentially help save time if a user can simply type in their criteria using a, a natural expression and then these fields um, and parameters will be understood by Dynamics that will go ahead and build a query. In this uh, preview screenshot there's an example where a natural expression is entered um, for people who have a birthday this month and who work in financial services. The system has then understood this and then populated the query, which could be edited um, as required. It looks to be a fantastic addition and we're certainly looking forward to seeing that in action. Finally, as um, Sri mentioned, from as early as next month, Forms Pro is changing to Dynamics 365 Customer Voice, um, and that's going to be a dedicated module for managing surveys and tracking feedback, which is going to be connected across Dynamics applications. So that concludes today's presentation. Many thanks for your time. We do hope you found this a useful introduction into just some of the features in Dynamics 365 Marketing and how this helps personalize experiences for customers and prospects. As Sri mentioned, this does offer a lot more capabilities than we have time to demonstrate today. Um, if you would like to find out more and understand how Dynamics Marketing can be used to handle and improve your own marketing processes, please do get in touch to discuss your requirements. We're going to pause for just a moment to take a look at your questions which have come through uh, before we go into the Q&A.